Welcome back to Game of Growth, and you're listening to episode 21. I am your host, Tina Verma, and today we are joined by Indresh Johan, Vice President at City eLearning North America. Hi, Indresh, how is it going? It's going well, Tina. How are you? I'm doing good, Indresh. Thank you. So, um, Indresh, can we start uh, with your roles and responsibilities at City eLearning, and how is the journey so far? Absolutely, Tina. Uh, you know, from a role and responsibility perspective, uh, you know, I head the e-learning team for CIFI North America, as you rightly mentioned, and I'm based here in California. Uh, our role is really to make sure that, you know, we, we find solutions that work for our customers. And, and the point that I want to make here is that irrespective of, you know, what role or responsibility each one of us has uh, in our company, the one focus that's always there is what is it that our customers need to help solve their problems and how do you find the right solution for them? And from that perspective, it's almost like a complete team effort uh, that we do here in CIFI. Uh, and, and that kind of guides our philosophy and that's guided our philosophy for a long, long time. And the journey has been actually pretty interesting in the sense that you know, when we first started almost about, uh, you know, 20 years ago, uh, the thought there was that, you know, we would develop e-learning content. You know, that is what our focus would be. And we kept doing that for a long time until our customers asked us, hey, you are developing content for us. Can you also help us to move this content onto a learning management system, you know, a learning platform? Mm -hmm. And that is when we started to develop expertise in that area. And then one day our customer said, hey, we have offices all over the world. Can you help us translate this content into multiple languages? So we got into translations. Then one day our customer said, oh, we have young people coming into our workforce. Uh, they are digital savvy. We need you to help us come up with new solutions that work with new technologies like augmented reality and virtual reality and artificial intelligence. And then we got into that area. The point being, it was our customers that forced us to step out of our boundaries, out of our comfort zone and get into areas that we were not too sure about. But yet, you know, we were able to develop, uh, you know, those capabilities and those skill sets. And, you know, Tina, at one point, uh, you know, we kind of said, hey, Let's step back and see what business we are in. And the answer that came back was really, we are in the business of helping our customers become successful mm -hmm. by solving their problems related to learning and performance. And so at the end of the day, you know, it really isn't about us, right, Tina? It's really about our customers and what can we do to make them successful? Amazing. So um, the aim is not just to provide the compact uh, e-learning solutions, but to uh, also helping them with integrating it to different platforms, then coming up with the translation uh, 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 work and then providing new sol uh, solutions as well. So that's quite a journey, uh, Indresh. It is. It is, Tina. So um, as you're in the e-learning industry for more than a decade, uh, can you share your thoughts on how the trends have changed for businesses, uh, you know, from adopting in-class training to e-learning approach for their um, employees. Yeah, absolutely, Tina. So, uh, Satina, so I've been in the e-learning industry for a little over two decades, uh, oh, actually. Amazing. <laughs> and 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 when I started, Tina, at that time there really wasn't uh, much going on in terms of e-learning. In fact, people didn't know what e-learning was so much so. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, I, I was really embarrassed to tell my wife and my daughters exactly what I was doing, because when I used to talk about e-learning, they used to look at me like I was talking French. You know, they couldn't understand a bit of <laughs> what I was trying to tell them. And so at some point in time, I just stopped saying what I was in. And I just said, oh, it's like a website, you know, like creating a web page. Mm -hmm. uh, and I left it at that. Uh, fast forward to now, where it's pretty much part and parcel of our everyday life, right? I mean, my my daughter, she uh, just graduated from uh, University of California. 
And, uh, you know, most of her curriculum was really online. Uh, you know, she was looking at uh, videos. She was doing podcasts. She was, uh, you know, looking at recordings of the lectures. Uh, and my wife, who also teaches at the same mm -hmm. university. Uh, and pretty much, you know, all of her lectures are now online. And, you know, she's just so much more comfortable uh, using e-learning as a medium. Uh, the point being that, you know, now it's really part and parcel of everyday life. But at the same time, I think the one thing that really stands out for me was, uh, you know, earlier it used to be like e-learning content uh, and, you know, videos. And then somebody would be doing in-class, uh, you know, trainings. And ultimately what we have found now is that there is a convergence of technologies that is happening. It's not about silos, but really how do you bring everything together uh, and, and bring a unified learning experience for our learners, for, for our customers. And that is a, is a major change that is happening. Uh, the point being, when we develop a solution for our customer, it's now no longer saying, hey, we will develop an e-learning course for them or we will develop content for a classroom training, or we will develop, say, a virtual reality solution. It's no longer that. It is what problem is the customer facing? What are the nuances of that problem that needs to be solved? Mm -hmm. Who is the audience? Uh, of course, you know, what are the outcomes? What are the business results? What is the budget, uh, timelines? And then within that, what is the unified solution that we can bring to the table? And that might include, Tina, you know, different components. You know, it might have videos, it might have uh, small micro learning modules, it might have, uh, you know, a portion of, say, an augmented reality solution, and it might also have an interactive workshop. And all of these work together, all of these come together to give a unified learning experience to our learners. So I guess that's probably something that has really changed. Uh, and that's a trend that is kind of uh, really galloping ahead, especially in today's times, uh, you know, where a lot of things are moving online. And that is causing people to look at e-learning from, a, from a, you know, a, a new perspective, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And we ourselves are also looking at working with different partners uh, you know, who bring different technologies to the table. For example, uh, you know, TruePush, your company. Uh, in fact, I was talking to Ravi about how can we use, uh, you know, push notifications to send learning content to the learners. Uh, earlier, we probably would have never thought of that. You know, we would have said, oh, since we are in the e-learning business, you know, we will just look at e-learning. But now it right. is like, you know what? No, we are in the problem solving business, irrespective of what tool that might need, uh, whether it is podcast, whether it is videos, whether it is AI, whether it is uh, virtual reality, chatbots, whatever. Uh, to us, it's like it doesn't matter. Right, right. Absolutely, Indrish. Uh, also, I would uh, agree with you this transition, you know from uh, changing from pen and paper uh, kind of learning and then adopting uh, different means uh, and then providing unified experience uh, to clients that matters a lot because i remember when i was in my uh, during my college time um, mm -hmm. uh, i was pretty much bored with pen and paper kind of learning and then i started figuring out okay i need to watch videos to have more impact on my understanding and to grab more knowledge so if i talk about as a student back then that was very important for me. And now when I extrapolate it to, to an organization who is um, having employees, in, in, employees in, in, in thousands and hundreds, so that's a very crucial parameter for mm -hmm. them. You know, How do you train your um, employees? That's very important. So right. uh, I completely agree with you, um, Indresh. Now, since every organization or a small enterprise is run by humans, we know that. Um, and of course, their expertise across uh, the verticals. So how learning solutions, e-learning solutions, are critical to set the base for this expertise? And uh, how companies are leveraging the solutions that um, CIFI e-learning provides? Right. Great question, uh, Tina. Yeah. Uh, you know, we people 
foreign technology space uh, oftentimes get so enamored with technology that we forget that at the end of the day, uh, you know, it's really about helping humans, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are in the business for humans, by humans, uh, and whatever we do, it is for <laughs> humans at the end of the day. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and oftentimes in today's world, with technology being so ubiquitous, uh, you know, we just get so enamored with it. And I think uh, the point you are making here is that, you know, we have to step back and look at the fact at the end of the day, who is the audience and what are their problems and how are we solving those? Uh, not just from a customer's perspective, Tina, but also, you know, our own teams, right? They're also... Uh, part of the same human ecosystem. And we also have to make sure that we take them into account uh, as we are developing these solutions for our customers. Uh, you know, one of the things that has happened uh, quite dramatically is we have found that companies that are successful mm -hmm. are those that have learning as part of their DNA. So, sure. and, and, and what I mean by that is that every day, they are learning. They are learning from their customers. They are learning from their workforce, their people, themselves, uh, you know, their successes, their failures. And what companies have figured out is that at the end of the day, technology, to be honest, is not a differentiator. Mm -hmm. You know, your business uh, plans are not a differentiator. Your products are not a differentiator. Why? Because it's easy to develop products uh, and, and, you know, uh, it's easy to come up with newer products. It's easy to come up with newer technologies. And when I say easy, I'm not saying like it is super, super easy. Of course, there's a lot of work involved. But the point is that is something that can be replicated. What cannot be replicated is that learning DNA in a company where people are themselves taking proactive action. You know, they are not waiting for the management to tell them, hey, do this, then do this. You know, how are you doing that? Uh, you know, micromanaging them. Companies that micromanage are, in my view, going forward, are not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. So you have to empower your employees, right? You have to give them that power of taking decisions. And how do you take decisions? You take decisions when you learn right? You learn from your mistakes, you learn from your successes, you learn from others, you collaborate with others. And so our customers have found out that that is the core of what is going to make them successful. And because of that, they are just so much open, Tina, now uh, to, to uh, listening to ideas that will help engage their employees, that will help them uh, you know, enrich the experience of the employees, and that will also help them perform at their at their fullest potential. And guess what? At the bottom of all of this is again learning, right? So right. the point being uh, that you know when we are talking to our customers, uh, our aim is to understand their business very, very, very well. So we really get to the bottom of what is happening. Uh, you know, not just with the company, but in their industry, with their competitors. What are the trends in the marketplace that is driving the growth of the company? And based on that, then we figure out exactly what the learning challenges are uh, for their workforce or for a department. And then we try to engineer and design a solution that would help to, you know, overcome those challenges. Uh, of course, we... Uh, you know, get a lot of feedback from uh, the learners themselves, from the managers, from the, uh, uh, you know, just their past experiences to make sure that whatever we develop would work for them. And then, uh, Tina, it's also an iterator process. And what I mean by that is just because once you develop and deliver a learning solution or an e-learning, that doesn't mean that's the end of the story. In fact, oftentimes, mm -hmm. the story begins after that. You know, you have to constantly be in touch with our customers to see what is working, what is not working, how are things changing? And things are changing every day, right? So uh, just because things are changing every day, our learning solutions also have to change and keep pace uh, with 
is happening in the marketplace. So, uh, so sorry for a long answer to your short question, but oh. uh, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like a never-ending process. True that, true that. Uh, and I, I absolutely agree with you because the solutions uh, would be different for uh, different brands, right? Uh, it could be used by uh, uh, an automotive sector or or, or from uh, oil and gas industry. They have different requirements, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure it's a, it's a lot of experimentation. I would say, um, and there is no perfect mm -hmm. solutions, but in fact, it keeps on changing uh, based on their requirements. Uh, so, um, Indresh, what's the um, innovative approach used by CFE e-learning to design the solutions uh, for a particular brand? And how exactly is the customization taking place here? Uh, Tina, innovation is a funny word, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a, it's such a, I would say, overused word. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we sometimes feel that innovation means that all of a sudden the bubble uh, you know burst and you know the light bubble goes up and suddenly you say oh that is what i want to develop right you you get this inspiration and we think that that is innovation right but to be honest in our experience innovation requires a lot of hard work uh, it requires a lot of thought processes uh, it also requires knowing our past and what i mean by that is you know, you really have to know what has worked, what has not worked, uh, what has changed. Uh, and like I said, you really do have to understand the customers and their industries and the, uh, you know, the trends in the marketplace. And as you are doing that on a daily basis, as you are talking to the customers, something happens. And that something happens is that you start to get ideas uh, you start to get uh, thoughts about what exactly will work for the customer. And oftentimes, those ideas and those thoughts really lead to the spark of innovation. And you know, you end up developing a new solution. You know, you end up developing a new product or you end up looking at a new design. And, you know, we say, okay, that is innovative. But we forget that behind it, there's a huge amount of work that, that goes on. Uh, you know, one of the things that we uh, we really help to do with our customers is that we help to give them a fresh perspective. And what I mean by that is oftentimes customers come to us with, hey, this is what we want you to do for us, or this is what our problem is, find us a solution. And like almost like nine times out of 10, what we have found is that sometimes, you know, they really do not understand the complete picture and simply because they're so in depth into their industry or into their company that sometimes you just have to step back right you have to kind of step out and look at the bigger picture which we can do because you know we are not like totally deeply embedded in that industry so we can step back we can look at the bigger picture and that gives us a different perspective and right. when we share that with our customer they get it you know they suddenly the penny drops and they say hmm we did not think of this in this way. This is interesting. Let's talk about it more. And again, the point is that is where innovation starts, uh, you know, getting a fresh perspective. Uh, then, of course, uh, you know, understanding our customers, understanding, you know, exactly what their problem is, and then coming up with the right solution, which oftentimes they say is an is a innovative solution, uh, as an example. You know, one of our customers, uh, which is one of the largest pharma companies in the world, uh, they had a problem where they had a piece of large equipment, which was the only piece of equipment they had, so they couldn't stop it. And because they couldn't stop it, they could not train people on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, oftentimes when you bring people to get trained, you, you know, give them hands-on practice with that piece right. of equipment. But they right. couldn't make that happen because it was such a high-volume business. And they said, hey, we are struggling to understand how to develop and what type of a learning to develop. And that's where our team came up with an augmented reality app that would work on an iPad. And so what it ended up doing was if you point that app on an iPad towards, say, a shop floor, mm -hmm. it would suddenly render a digital replica of that entire machine. 
wonderful. And and then you would be able to using your fingers, your touch to play around with the machine. You would be guided to different parts of the machine. You would be guided to perform different operations, different steps, all of that using a digital model that you can see on your iPad. Uh, but to you, it appears as if it's a complete machine on a real shop floor. And so that helped people to get trained uh, very rapidly. In fact, the customer told us that they were able to cut down on the training time by almost 61%. Oh, that's, that's quite significant. It is, yes. And, and the other point was, of course, that they did not have to stop production to train people. So, you know, in some ways, that's like an example of an innovative solution, uh, which came about because, you know, customer had a big problem. True that. And in fact, uh, uh, these solutions would uh, for sure save a lot of resources for, for these brands. Uh, moving ahead to the next question, Imresh, uh, what growth strategies are being implemented uh, by your organization and how tough is the competitor market, you know, where SIFI e-learning is among the leaders to provide e-learning e solutions for um, Fortune 500 and uh, 1,000 uh, companies. So mm -hmm. what are the growth strategies that uh, you're using? Uh, you know, one of the things that we also found out early on that, you know, growth for the sake of growth uh, is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I mean by that mm -hmm. is oftentimes from a growth perspective, we say, oh, we have to increase sales, right? So uh, it, there's kind of a one-to-one -one mapping between growth and sales. And so when people say, hey, uh, you know, how are you growing the business? Uh, we kind of say, okay, what that really means is how are you growing your revenue, right? That is, uh, right. Uh, you know, one of the uh, uppermost metrics for us. Growth means how are we helping our customers, to be very honest. Uh, and we, I mean, it's not to say as if sales does not matter or revenue does not matter. Obviously, that's a, that's a hugely important metric. But that metric, Tina, is as a result of helping our customers, right? If we were to focus on sales right. alone, uh, then that would keep all of our attention to that one single metric. And we would forget that the way to that growth is through our customers, through helping them. And so for us, our growth strategy is really focused on knowing our customers and helping them to solve some of their most difficult problems that they have not been able to solve either because of their own resources or because they are using other vendors. Uh, and so we try to make sure that you know, we understand that. Uh, the second thing, Dina, that we like to understand is what are the seismic shifts that are happening in our customers' industry? Because mm -hmm. that tells us about the trends, the underlying trends uh, that are really driving everything else. And so we do a, a, you know, a really great job in trying to understand that. Uh, the third thing, Tina, that we also look at is we do understand that not every customer is going to be a good fit for us and vice versa. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we also try to understand exactly what is the best fit uh, from a segmentation perspective. Uh, and, and for that cultural fit, I think is hugely important for us. So our culture and our customer's culture should also align. Uh, and the fourth thing that we focus on is, is marketing. Uh, I think uh, when I say marketing, I don't mean like, uh, you know, like a salesy kind of a marketing, but marketing okay. that focuses on educating your customers, uh, marketing that focuses on communicating with your customers, uh, marketing that focuses on enriching, uh, you know, the knowledge and, and the lives of our customers. So what we call outreach. So that really is the fourth pillar uh, from our growth strategy. So, so, you know, so, you know, really quickly, number one, you know, know our customers. Number two, understand the trends. Number three, understand who is the best fit. And number four, uh, communications. So I think these four are the pillars uh, for our growth strategies. Uh, now, you also asked about, uh, you know, competitors. Uh, 
Right. We love our competitors. We we adore our competitors because our competitors teach us. You know, we try to learn from our competitors. You know, what are the things that they are doing really well? Uh, you know, what are the what are the technologies that they are leveraging better than us? Uh, right. What are what are some of the marketing activities that they are doing which we can learn from? So we love competitors. Uh, we love competition. Uh, competition keeps us on our toes. It helps us to become better and better and better. Uh, and uh, funnily enough, Tina, we also collaborate with our competitors. Uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, you know, in the world of today, there are such huge problems uh, that cannot be solved by just any one single company or any single organization or any single individual. Absolutely. So what we have found is that to bring the best of the best solutions to our customers, we sometimes also have to collaborate uh, and partner with our competitors. And, and that's a great feeling because then, you know, we can, we can bring the, the best solutions to the market. And of course, you know, we can add value uh, and we can also learn from one another as well. Absolutely. I agree with you. I believe that growth comes uh, with collaboration and learning from each other's um, uh, failures, I would say, um, that mm -hmm. kind of show the mirror. And uh, we this, this shows that how the growth takes place when, when collaborations between brands works and um, the results in the possible best solution uh, mm -hmm. to help uh, humanity as a whole, I would say. Absolutely. So, uh, moving ahead, uh, Indresh, uh, you know, you talked about AR and then VR, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. So uh, what tools and technologies are used to build these solutions that we are talking about uh, since the beginning? Right, right. So, you know, there are really a variety of, of tools and technologies, Tina, uh, that go into making any sort of a learning product, uh, whether it is mm -hmm. e-learning or uh, you know, AI uh, tools or uh, virtual reality or augmented reality. But typically, uh, you know, there's a whole life cycle that needs to be so followed from a development standpoint. And starting with simple things like storyboards, you know, which are developed in Word and PowerPoint, uh, going on into, uh, you know, high-end uh, graphic tools like, uh, you know, AutoCAD tools like Autodesk and Adobe Photoshop, uh, those are all tools that kind of come into play when you're developing media and graphics. Uh, and then, of course, you have to uh, make sure that all of the content comes together. And that comes together using tools like Captivate and Articulate Storyline and Articulate Rise. Uh, when you're talking about, say, an augmented reality solution, uh, then, you know, we use tools which are uh, focused on technologies like AR Core, which is an Android-based technology, mm -hmm. and then AR Kit, which is an Apple-based uh, technology, uh, in order to also add interactivities, uh, you know, to your graphics elements, uh, we use tools like uh, Unity 3D. Uh, there's the point that I'm trying to make is that there's just a huge amount of tool set that is out there, uh, and all of that comes together to be able to create these uh, programs. Uh, of course, depending on, you know, what the final output is, uh, the teams use the right type of tools uh, to tr develop the right type of, uh, you know, training uh, intervention. Absolutely. Uh, that's uh, wonderfully explained, Indresh. So uh, lastly, I would ask you, um, uh, I would like to know your thoughts and messages that you would like to give to, you know, engineers and uh, entrepreneurs and learners out there uh, regarding the opportunities in the industry uh, that comes from, from your uh, learning experience of more than two decades? Yeah, I, that's a great question, uh, <laughs> Tina. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we all have a message, right, for, for others based on what we have gone through in our lives, uh, right. what we have learned and, uh, you know, all the ups and downs we have seen. And, and like Tina, you were saying, we learn from our failures. And that's very, very true. I think we learn from our failures more uh, than what we learn from our successes. And so I would say there are uh, possibly a, a you know, few principles uh, that, that you know, I like to follow 
uh, uh, and hopefully that will be helpful to your listeners. Uh, the first one is really to understand yourself, uh, you know, to know yourself really, really well. Uh, and because to the extent you know yourself, you can improve yourself, right? We are in the learning business. Uh, what good is it is that if we ourselves don't learn? So I think knowing yourself, understanding yourself uh, becomes hugely important. The second point and something that I keep talking again and again uh, in our conversation is really to understand your customer and your market segment very well. Who are you serving? You know, who are you uh, trying to solve problems for? And this is true not just for business. You know, you could be in the education space. You know, you could be in healthcare. Uh, you could be, uh, you know, uh, into any technical area. Irrespective of that, you have to know right. who are you serving and, and who are you solving their problems for. Uh, the third pa aspect, Tina, is really get into the weeds, meaning sometimes we you know, look at a problem and we try to come up with a solution which is very high level. Uh, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it might not work when you get down to the details. So I like to keep saying that, you know, the devil is in the details. So always know that you know whatever you are you are you are uh, trying to bring about from a solution standpoint it truly truly works on the ground uh, and the fourth thing is really to take action you know at the end of the day uh, anybody can come up with ideas right we can come up with an idea we can come up with a concept we can come up with this really house high sounding thought but it has to work so you have to take action you have to take risk uh, sometimes, you know, that fear of failure uh, forces us not to take action. And then we say, hey, sorry, the idea did not work out because the market was not ready, right? Because the technology was not ready. Mm -hmm. uh, our customers were not willing to pay. But the fact is, you know, unless we take action, you know, we really do not get the feedback that is needed. Taking action means getting feedback. And that feedback tells us, whether we are on the right track or not. And if we are not, you know, we course correct, right? We take corrective action. Uh, and then we take action once again. Again, we wait for feedback. And then again, we take action. So my point is that we are really in this, in this circle or the cycle of learning, doing, failing or succeeding, and then again, learning and doing. Uh, of course, at the end of the day, results matter. But those results tell you, you know, whether you are taking the right action, whether you're doing the right, uh, you know, uh, uh, design, whether you're following the right methodology. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the other thing I really do want to add here, something that Tina, you alluded to, is the power of collaboration, right? We should never think that everything is going to happen just because of me. You know, it's I who is going to make things happen. That is not going to work. Uh, it has never worked. And it's definitely not going to work in today's society where you have to collaborate. You have to reach out to others. Uh, and that team spirit and that collaboration becomes hugely, hugely important. And the final point, Tina, is, you know, have faith. Uh, you know, the fact that we have an idea, the fact that someone has reached out to us, the fact that we have right. taken action, we should have faith that things will ultimately work out. Even if they do not work out in the short run, in the long run, everything ultimately works out. Absolutely. Uh, that's wonderful in the uh, in Raj. So also I would take this uh, message from you that the devil is in the details. So <laughs> thank you so much for right. this wonderful <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful and informative discussion, Indresh. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to episode 21 with Indresh Johan, Vice President at CFE eLearning, North America. Thank you so much, Indresh. Thank you so much, Tina. <laughs>